One evening in our Waterton Lakes Park camp, when a number of guests of the big hotel came to sit with us around our lodge fire and listen to our talk, interpreted to them of course, I said to old Akko Mukostistix, many big ears, Blackfeet name for mules, old friend, it is now for you to tell of your fighting days. Tonight, why not something different, he inquired. So far, all our talk here has been of war. Oh, I went against enemy tribes many times, counted coups on two Crees, two Kalispells, one Assiniboyan, one crow that I killed on different raids, stole many horses and one woman, a woman of the river people. But somehow, I don't feel like talking of all that tonight. It is this that has been in my thoughts all day, and I think that it will interest you. Very long ago, before we obtained horses, when we used dogs to draw and to carry our belongings, there came a time when our Kaina tribe made a peace agreement with the Crees. For several winters after that, members of the two tribes frequently visited one another, came to the Kaina camp one day, and a number of Cree visitors and were welcomed in their lodges of their friends. One of the Crees, a big, fine-appearing man, visiting here and there in the camp, saw a very beautiful young woman and wanted her, although back in the camp of his own people he had three women. He began following this young woman about, and at last, getting a chance to speak to her out of hearing of others, he asked her to go with him to his camp, become his woman. That made her very angry. She called him a dog face and told him to go away and never speak to her again. He laughed, told her that she would become his woman later on. Some days after this, the young woman was out with others, picking berries, when the Cree suddenly ran in among them and seized her and made her run off with him, threatening to stab her with his big flint knife if she held back. The other woman hurried into camp and told of her seizure by the Cree. Her man was out hunting, she had no near relatives. The visiting Cree said that he was the one who had stolen her was a very dangerous man, for he had a medicine that enabled him to kill people without striking them first. So it was that none attempted to trail the stealer and rescue the woman. The woman's man, Big Elk, did not return from his hunt until the following day, and upon learning that the Cree had stolen his woman, he became very angry. Were all the men of his tribe cowards, that they did not run after the thief and kill him? he asked. Well, he himself was no coward. What if the thief did provide a powerful medicine? He was going right to the Cree camp to take his woman. Yes, there were others who had a powerful medicine. He had one. He would soon learn which was the more powerful of the two. Two days later, Big Elk entered the Cree camp, went to the chief of the tribe, and complained of the thief, asked for help in recovering his woman. The chief replied that the man had a medicine so powerful that none dared anger him. I will see how powerful he is. Which of these is his lodge? The chief pointed to it. Big Elk went quickly to it, entered, sat down just inside the doorway. On the woman's side of the lodge was his woman. Upon his couch in the rear of the lodge sat the thief. My woman, I have come for you, said Big Elk. His woman knew, made no reply to that. She was crying. She held out her hands to him, but at once dropped them in her lap when the thief shouted to Big Elk. You can't have the woman. You go from my lodge at once. I will go from it with my woman. I have come for her. I shall have her, Big Elk replied. Never again will she be your woman. She is mine. I shall keep her. And once I tell you this, leave my lodge at once. Return to your people, or you shall die right here. I have a powerful medicine. I shall cause it to kill you, right there where you sit, if you do not do as I say, shouted the Cree. Try it. I am not afraid of your medicine. Twice, now, I have told you to leave my lodge. Again, I tell you, go, or suffer a terrible death. Big Elk made no answer to that, just sat and stared at the Cree. Said the Cree, Again, and for the last time, I tell you to leave my lodge at once. No reply. That was the fourth time that he had been ordered to leave the lodge, and he knew, did Big Elk, that the Cree would now attempt to carry out his threat. But still, he did not move, just sat there motionless, staring straight into his enemy's eyes. The Cree took from the head of his couch a quill-embroidered, red-painted sack, opened it, brought out a small image of a man, set it upright upon the ground, and said to Big Elk, there he is, my powerful medicine. He will go over to you, kill you right there where you sit. Good, tell him to come. The Cree spoke to the image, and it started walking around the fireplace and toward Big Elk, and said the Cree, Your end is near. When he reaches you, he will kill you. Never will he get me, said Big Elk, and brought out his own medicine, an image of a spider made of soft deer leather, embroidered with quills of various colours. He prayed to it, a short little prayer, 
set it upon the ground, and it started running toward the man image, got near it, cast an end of its body thread around the neck of the image, then ran across the lodge and to a pole, and up it, trailing its body thread as it went. Then, when well up the pole, it began to draw in the thread, and soon the noosed image was pulled from the ground, slowly was drawn up higher and higher, nearer to the draw, the spider image. The woman cried out at this strange sight, and the Cree thief stared at his medicine image with eyes of fear. Then said Big Elk to the thief, Your medicine that you said was so powerful, it is worthless, a nothing medicine. When my spider draws it up all the way, seizes and bites into small pieces, then do you die right there where you sit. The thief stared at Big Elk with fear. His lips trembled. He held out trembling hands and cried, Pity me, do not let your spider seize my little man. I give you back your woman, take her and go. Big Elk made no answer to that. He sat there smiling, singing very softly the song of his spider image. The man image rose higher and higher, twirling this way, that way. And when it was but a little way from the spider image, the Cree thief began to cry and whimpered to Big Elk, Do not let your spider draw my man any higher. I give not only your woman, I also give you my weasel skin war shirt, my eagle tail feathered war bonnet, my weapons, all of these that are mine you may like. Pity me, great chief, allow me to live. Your medicine, then, is a useless medicine without power. Just that, powerless, pity me, let me live. Big Elk laughed, spoke to his spider image, and let the man image drop to the ground. And there it lay, the Cree thief nor his woman paying any attention to it. The spider descended the pole, walked over to Big Elk, and he took it up and put it in his medicine sack, and then said to the Cree, I want two of your dogs with the travois that they draw. Load upon the travois your war clothes and the other things that you gave me, also some food and several good robes. Do this, have your women do it quickly, if you want to live. The thief spoke to his women. They hurried to get the dogs in Travois and loaded them with the valuable things. When that was done, Big Elk said to the Cree, Well, we go, my woman and I. Come again to my camp and steal her. Come soon. And with that, the two left the lodge and, leading the dogs, went their homeward way.